Okay, this will be a short assignment. This is the only one you're going to get today. There are 500 stray cats in the town of Alto. That amount is going to increase by 5%. How many cats will there be after the 5% increase? Now, this is different than yesterday. Don't just go setting that up. Decide you know what you're doing. Putting it over 100. It ain't going to work that way. Notice how it doesn't say of after the percent, so you don't see of, no of. So I'm not, I can't line that up over 100 if it's not an of. Instead, it's called an increase. It's not a percent of, it's an increase. There is a specific formula you use with increase and decrease, okay? That formula is this, the percent multiplied by the before amount equals the after amount okay now you got to be careful with your percent there's a couple don't just put in five okay you put in that it's going to be wrong what you need to do to fill in the percent is you need to always start with a hundred percent and then you either add or subtract the percent well since it says increase we're going to add it okay so 100 plus 5 is 105 percent. Now, so you're like, okay, I'll just put 105 right there. No, you need to put the decimal at the end and move it twice this way. This way, left. Backwards, left, whatever you want to call it. 1, 2. So your percent factor is 1.05. Cross that out, put 1.05. Now the question is where that 500 goes. Now I have after circled, so after is what you're finding. So after is gonna be X, and then the amount in the problem, the actual amount 500 is gonna be your before. So now write the equation so it looks a little sharper. 1.05 times 500 equals X. Now make a wall on the side of the X. There's nothing there, okay? So you just do the operation like that, okay? So 1.05, when your variable's by itself, you just go over here and figure out what the operation multiplies to. 525. Cats, okay? Now, let's read the problem. There's 500 cats and it increased 5%. How many there are after it increases? 525 makes sense. It's legit. Okay, school no, a school's number of students decreases by 5%. If there are 600 students after the decrease, how many students were there before? Okay. All right, now, so again, it's not a percent of decreases. Decreases is underlined. Okay, can't really see it because the circle's in the way, but it is. So it's percent times, before. you can live off that formula with an increase, decrease, it's not a percent of, you don't put it over 100. You're going to use 100%, but not with the cross multiplying divide. Okay, percent is the most important. So I take 100%, but decreasing would mean minus 5%. So that would be 95%. And I still move the decimal back or two to the left. Now, if you don't have anything before it, you put a zero. So 0 0.95 is your percent factor. Okay, now we're finding the before this time, but I've circled before, so the before is the X. Whatever I've circled, that's gonna be your X. And we have the after is 600, okay? Now write that out so it looks pretty, okay? 0 0.95 times X equals 600. Now make the wall on the side, the little line on the X side, and X isn't by itself here, okay? You have times 0 0.95. So to find X, you're going to do the opposite of times, which is divide. And you're going to get a weird looking answer here, okay? And I'm going to tell you how to write your answer. Because you see, I'm going to divide 600 by 0 0.95, and I get that. And that's going to happen especially on the ones where you have to divide. Now, 
you're talking students here. If you're not talking about money, if you're not talking about money, just put the number before the decimal. Or you can take it up one. It doesn't matter. Either put 631 or 632. I don't care. Okay? I won't mark you off either way. Now, if it's a money problem, which this one was not, if it's a money problem, you're going to have two numbers after the decimal because that would be your sense. But, again, this isn't money. It's students. So it doesn't make sense to get a decimal for students, so you have to cap the number by rounding. Okay, next one. An item is marked up 15%. It cost $15.59 after the markup. What was the price before the markup? So again, it's not percent. Of, none of these are percents of where you can just put them over 100. So it's percent times before equals after. So take your 100%. Up would mean it go, It adds. Okay, They're, The word underline kind of gives you whether you add or subtract. So it's 115%. You've got to move the decimal 2 to the left. And you have a 1 in front of it, so 1.15. And that's your percent factor. Again, since we're not putting it over 100, we have to make that percent into a decimal by moving it 2 to the left. Now, I'm finding the before. That's what I don't know. Okay. Then after is $15.59. So write the equation so it looks pretty. Make a wall on the side of your variable, your letter. Now, x is not by itself. It has a times. So I need to divide to figure x out. Okay. Because if I see times... The very, if I see the letters being times, I need to divide. And when you divide, you get some weird answers. Okay, So 15.59 divided by 1.15. Now, how do I, now, is this a money problem? Yeah, dollars is the problem. So I take two digits after the decimal. So either put 13.55 or 13.56. It doesn't matter to me. It's an approximation. And that makes sense. Okay, you want to define what it cost before, so 1355 before, then it was marked up 15%. It ended up at 1559. Makes sense to me. Okay, an item is on sale for 25% off its original price of $45. How much is it after the sale? So you take 100%, okay? No, set up your equation first. Again, it ain't percent of, it's percent off. So percent times before equals after. So when it doesn't say of, you can't put it over 100 and then cross multiply divide. It ain't going to work like that. It ain't going to be that easy. Okay, off. So that would be minus 25%. So it would be 75%. You still got to move the decimal twice to the left. So zero, put a, if there's nothing before the decimal, you put a zero. So 0 0.75 is your percent factor. Okay, after is what I'm trying to figure out. So that's X, and then before is $45. So now you have 0 0.75 times 45 equals X. So now X is on this side, but X is by itself. Okay, if X is, if the variable is by itself, you just come over here and figure that out. Okay. Zero point, you don't have to do the opposite or anything like that. 33 point, now, this is a money problem, so I want those two numbers after the decimal, okay? So 33.75 dollars, okay? And that makes sense. It was the original, it was $45 before, then they took 25% off, so it's going to go down, and it's 33.75. Two more. I buy a textbook for $40. After I'm done with it, I can sell it for 12% more than what I bought it for. How much did I sell it for after I was done? So percent times before equals after. Okay, so 100%. It's not a percent of, it's a percent more. So you want to add 12% to your 100. That's 112% 
you got to move the decimal twice to the left. You can't since you're not putting that over a hundred in a fraction. You need to then make it a decimal. So one point twelve. Now after is highlighted, so that's what I'm looking for. And then forty dollars is the before amount. So the equation is 1.12 times 40 equals x. Okay. Now x is by itself. That means I can just perform the operation that I see on the other side. So 1.12 times 40. Now 44.8. Now this is a money problem, so I want two numbers after the decimal. Now you're like, I only see one number. Well, then you put a zero and make it 80. Okay. So 44.80 equals x. Remember, we want decimals on money problems. If it's not a money problem, then you just take the whole number in front of the decimal. Okay, my last problem. Gas decreased in price by 5%. If the price after the decrease was $2.39, how much did gas cost before it decreased? So you have percent times before equals after. Okay, so percentage. 100% decreased by 5%, so minus 5%, that's 95%, okay? Trace the decimal back twice, so 0 0.75 is my percent factor, okay? All right, we have the, we're looking for the before, okay? And the after is 2.39, okay? So 0 0.95 times x equals 2.39. Okay, x is not by itself, so you circle, if you have times, you circle it, which we have times, and we just have to divide, okay? And then I'll know what x equals. So we take $2.39. And you get weird answers when you divide. You just got to accept it, okay? Now, do I want a decimal? Yeah, because I'm talking about money. I want two digits after it. So 2.51, you could go 52 if you want. I don't really care if it's 251 or 252, as long as you get one of the two. All right.